session. We are now on the third and last day of the forum. We heard a lot of the interesting discussions from days one and two about some multidisciplinary approaches on knowledge management that drives the necessary change and some examples of how they were applied and improved the way things are done with more and meaningful impact. I was amazed to hear the White House experience, the behavioral science, the NASA, of course, and, and many others. This morning, one of the sessions discussed about ADB's enhanced country knowledge programming. The session showcased how ADB is streamlined, uh, streamlining knowledge work at the country level. So this session will provide concrete example of that work and will demonstrate how ADB is piloting new initiatives and leading the necessary change for the benefits of its developing member countries. It is a great honor and pleasure to be introducing to you our amazing lineup of speakers. They will be talking about the importance and growing demand for knowledge management in development, development planning, and especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. This plenary titled Future Proofing Knowledge Management Systems in Asia and the Pacific, the case of the Philippines National Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, will be featuring the partnerships between NEDA and ADB. What we wanted to highlight in this session are the partnership, of course, the knowledge management journey in NEDA, and the drive um, and the that derives um, lessons learned and good practices to see how we can replicate this to other developing member countries. So without further ado, we will kick off the session with our first speaker who will be sharing with us why ADB puts knowledge management on top of its priority. Please join me in welcoming ADB's Vice President for Knowledge Management Sustainable Development, Mr. Bambang Sosantono. Thank you, Joe. Honorable Secretary Chua, Under Secretary Rose, Director Nerissa, colleagues from NEDA and ADB, a very good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. It is my great pleasure to welcome all of you to discuss one of our most vibrant partnership, that is the one between the Philippine National Economic and Development Authority, NEDA, and ADB. While we work with NEDA on many topics, this one on, on knowledge management is closest to my heart. Our collaborations to enhance NEDA's knowledge capabilities began in 2019. This was the first time we could apply our experience in enterprise knowledge management to a government agency. We started this critical work before the pandemic, and now, after almost 20 months into the pandemic, it has become crystal clear that knowledge management will be critical to the recovery. Just after our work started with NEDA, the pandemic forced us to move to a virtual setting. At its start, many governments struggled to find ways to cope with the new working arrangement. The Philippines was no exception. During the 2020 lockdown, ADB supported NEDA in conducting over 50 staff interviews, online surveys, and a series of focus groups to understand how NEDA was managing its knowledge and how it can be leveraged. We found a business case for a knowledge management strategy. The aim was to ensure that relevant knowledge can be located easily, then access, process, and reuse by NEDA staff. And importantly, so it can be done in the most timely, conducive, efficient, and effective way to produce high quality output. NEDA's knowledge management strategy was successfully launched in June 2020, recognizing knowledge as its core asset. The value behind the strategy is the Filipino fiesta, one emphasizing bayanihan, collaboration, and team spirit. The new strategy complements ongoing reforms in NEDA's human resources, library and records, and information technology. It has helped NEDA in establishing its reputation as a knowledge management trailblazer among the Philippines government agencies. Going forward into strategy implementation, ADB is committed to continuing our support. Specifically, our areas of joint work will be initially on continual training and designing of a monitoring and evaluation framework. Together, we hope to further leverage knowledge management for building a resilient public sector, a government ready for any future crisis, and for building forward better. 
I'm delighted we have uh, Secretary Chua, who has been very supportive of our partnership from the very beginning. Yusek Rose and Director Nerissa to share with us how they are transforming NEDA into a learning organization, one that is more resilient and future ready. Thank you very much. Enjoy the discussion and maraming salamat po. Back to you, Joe. Thank you very much, VP. You've made us really proud, championing ADB's knowledge work at the country level. Your leadership and guidance motivates us in, to perform our work with NEDA more effectively and efficiently. So at this point, we will hear some highlights of the NEDA ADB partnership from the NEDA Secretary Carl Chua. Please join me, join me in welcoming Secretary Chua on stage. Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, ADB Vice President for Knowledge Management and Sustainable Development, Mr. Bambang Susantono. ADB Country Director, Kelly Bird. Mr. Vivek Raman, the Principal Knowledge Sharing and Services Specialist. Under Secretary Rose Edilion, Director Nerissa Esguera, our partners from the Asian Development Bank, the National Economic and Development Authority, colleagues in government, stakeholders, good afternoon to all of you. In 2019, the Philippine government, uh, the Philippine government identified NEDA as a lead agency for the Philippines Country Knowledge Program of the ADB. Since then, we have been working closely with ADB to strengthen NEDA's knowledge generation, dissemination, and management services and capacity. Our partnership was later formalized through a memorandum of understanding signed on December 9, 2020. This has furthered ADB support for NEDA's knowledge management program. Through this collaboration, ADB provided NEDA with strategic support for knowledge management through the assessment of KM processes, capacity building, and the development of a KM strategy. Furthermore, ADB also assisted NEDA in defining the functions of our new Knowledge Management Division under the Development Information Staff. These will be key in making our systems more efficient. As the country's socioeconomic planning agency, NEDA is mandated to forecast macroeconomic indicators, analyze policies, and appraise and monitor programs and projects. These outputs are used to provide high-level advice to policymakers both in the Congress and in the executive branch. Likewise, various agencies, officials, development partners, and stakeholders use the reports of NEDA on the progress of major programs and projects. To deliver more in these trying times, NEDA can further improve our knowledge management systems with many processes still being done manually today and in silos. We are now in the final stretch of this administration, and my priority is to give the next administration a stronger NEDA foundation in the areas of organizational improvement, human resource, the use of data science, technology, innovation, innovative business processes, digital transformation, and knowledge management. We are currently facing an unprecedented crisis, and we need to document lessons learned to help policymakers today and in the future. Hence, we need to have a system in place to keep and share this knowledge more efficiently and effectively. The new normal has underscored the importance and urgency for knowledge management and digital transformation. For instance, alternative work arrangements have made it more challenging for staff to collaborate and share knowledge among staff and even with our clients and stakeholders. These challenges present opportunities for us to pursue reforms. Personally, I have always believed and advocated for better data management within the government in order to strengthen policymaking and service delivery. For the country to reach its next stage of development and to sustain it as an upper middle income country, we need to innovate. And for this to become a national policy, we need to set an example within NEDA and within our agencies. 
Currently, NEDA is creating various dashboards and enhancing our data repositories so we can have a single source of truth. This will allow us to monitor programs, projects, and internal processes more efficiently and give us more time to focus on the more value-adding aspects of our work. While more work is needed, we are glad to have taken the first step towards institutionalizing knowledge management. I am optimistic that our partnership will pave the way for NEDA to become an even more future-ready organization and set the example for the rest of the public sector. We are grateful to ADB for your support and we look forward to a continuously good relations with you, uh, working together towards our ambition natin 2040 vision. Thank you very much and stay safe. Thank you very much, Secretary. As VP mentioned earlier, ADB remains committed to the partnership and of course in supporting NEDA's KM journey. So to supplement Secretary's remarks, we will be showing you a short video explaining how NEDA produces knowledge and why is there a need for having a robust knowledge management system in development planning. Video, please. Economic and Development Authority, or NEDA, is the government's socio-economic planning body, highly regarded as the authority in macroeconomic forecasting and policy analysis and research. NEDA produces and derives knowledge from its work and engagements with stakeholders within and outside the country. To do this well, NEDA needs a modern knowledge management system that promotes learning and gets work done efficiently. This will improve our responsiveness as knowledge workers and planners, serving society's needs for today and shaping a better future. Knowledge management is the means by which NETA staff can most effectively capture, structure, and share business critical data, information, and knowledge in order to ensure team members can easily locate, access, and use it when they need it and as they need it. Our knowledge largely appears in two forms, explicit knowledge in the form of data, analysis, and policy papers, and implicit knowledge such as judgments and opinions shared during consultations. This rests mostly with NEDA staff. These result in a rich source of knowledge that can be used to help the government make solid decisions on policy and positions. However, we recognize that we could do more to locate and access our valuable knowledge this means we could better organize diverse knowledge, whether in print, digital, verbal, or even visual. So how can we better manage knowledge? The development information staff is proud to announce a new knowledge management strategy. Developed in conjunction with the Asian Development Bank, this strategy aims to centralize data and information to save you time when you're looking for information, enable a seamless flow of knowledge to help you find information easily. Ensure knowledge is validated and trusted to provide you with quality information. Enhance governance to make it easier for you to identify and find the right knowledge. We have also created a new KM team to support the implementation of the strategy. And you will directly benefit from the efficient and timely locating and leveraging of NETA's knowledge. What does the strategy look like? The strategy focuses on five key dimensions called NEDA's House of KM. The house is built on three key pillars, people, content, and processes, founded on the tools and technologies and sustained by strong governance. People focuses on values and norms that promote knowledge sharing, communications to influence and enable change, performance indicators and incentives to manage knowledge, capacity building to stimulate learning, Content looks at clear lists of knowledge products and services. Intuitive structuring of content that is easy to find. Classifications and access protocols to ensure. Processes seeks to embed KM into work practices. Ease procedures for submitting, storing, retrieving, and refreshing knowledge. Ensure knowledge is relevant and applicable. Tools and technologies help manage centralized knowledge solutions and platforms. Increase knowledge sharing through peer exchanges and communities or networks. Governance sustains KM by guaranteeing inclusive approaches across all NETA units. Centralizing guidance, monitoring, and resourcing. Having a senior KM technical working group to oversee and guide its evolution. You are an important partner in managing knowledge. 
To make this strategy work, your role is to collaborate and share knowledge with other teams. Apply what you've learned from past lessons and good practices. Experiment and try out new ways of approaching work. This year begins an exciting journey in our knowledge. Let us all contribute to making NETA an efficient, effective, and knowledgeable team, an acknowledged institution in providing high-level policy advice, developing consensus, and setting the agenda for inclusive development. That video that you have just seen is the result of about two years collaboration and most part of which was conducted online in the midst of a COVID uh, outbreak. It just shows NEDA's agility and of course the importance of knowledge and the appreciation of its critical role in making informed decisions. Let us now dive deeper and learn more about the NEDA KM journey and the strategy from Director Nerissa Esguerra of the Development Information Staff and Undersecretary Rosa De Leon from the Policy Planning Group. They'll be talking about the issues encountered so far in the early implementation of the strategy, the lessons learned, and the future actions to be taken to move the knowledge agenda forward in NEDA. Director Nerissa, the stage is yours. Thank you, Joe, and thank you to ADB for organizing this session. I must say that what I'm going to share is no success story, at least not yet. Even some of our KM team members um, think it's premature for us to talk about NEDA KM at this time. And I too actually felt the same. But then someone reminded me that success starts from somewhere. And sometimes what matters is the low starting point when people have the motivation to rise to the challenge and experiment. So let me just talk about a few highlights of our early KM experience. I actually first encountered the term knowledge management when I was with the World Bank. Honestly, I thought of it as just another abstract jargon. It was too conceptual for me. But when I joined NEDA, I began to take interest in KM because knowledge is at the core of NEDA's work. Agencies and policymakers rely on NEDA's analysis and advice. We co-create and share knowledge when we engage other agencies and stakeholders on policy issues, programs, and projects. Yet internally, it's often difficult to find NEDA's own knowledge. This becomes glaring when we receive information requests, when officials are interviewed by media, when a detail-oriented president asks for numbers and analysis that went into a proposed policy or project, when legislators call on NEDA during hearings, and even when someone leaves the agency and brings with him or her all the rich experience and knowledge acquired from working in NEDA. We thought um, some, uh, these are some of the pain points where KM can help. Certainly, there has been some form of knowledge management in NEDA. And we tried out things here and there. But in early 2019, an opportunity presented itself. I was asked to join a meeting I didn't know about. And it turned out to be the ADB's proposed country knowledge program. And just because the word knowledge was there, I took the opportunity to share what we were trying to do on knowledge management. I was surprised that ADB would pick it up from there and things happened fast. I'm sharing this because I thought my being in that meeting was quite serendipitous. And I thank our ADB partners, Kelly Bird, Susan Roth, Vivek Raman, Jane Karangal, San Jose, and team for taking action so swiftly. So these photos were taken during the courtesy visit to ADB Vice President Bambang Susantono of Secretary Pernia together with the NEDA top officials. And it's just one of several activities organized within a short period, not to mention the actual PM assessment and strategy document produced even amid the pandemic. The other thing I'd like to share with you is the NEDA Knowledge Fiesta. It was a learning week we organized in July to launch the KM strategy document and to recognize and celebrate various KM initiatives in NEDA. At least to me and the KM team, the event was significant. First, it veered away from the typically serious NEDA meetings. It was uh, festive, peppered with uh, Filipino humor, using the vernacular of the millennials that comprise a large chunk of NEDA personnel. I was ready to receive, and I did receive, comments that it might be inappropriate because we had foreign guests from ADB there. But we took the risk, and as I thought, our guests would appreciate having a glimpse of Filipino culture. More importantly, the knowledge fiesta was significant because to my mind, it was a bubbling up from below 
of a surprisingly diverse knowledge management apps, to use a metaphor, and the vigorous and quick response of Secretary Carl Shua was to create a platform that could both A, guide the development of these apps in directions that support the NEDA House of KM, and B, ensure that those that best address the most important pain points would evolve from there. As we implement the KM strategy, we would like to pay attention to content or knowledge itself, the kind of knowledge we need, not just to address today's pain points, but importantly, to shape the future. We need the kind of knowledge that we really cannot get from past experience, the kind that we can only learn by doing and sharing and exchanging ideas about the future. We do not know how far this metaphor of KM apps and platforms will bring us, but it does ensure that we are evolving and not implanting practices from outside that might not be a good fit for NEDA's organizational and cultural ecosystem. And at the same time, I'm keenly aware that a knowledge fest that will not be visited by a data secretary from the future who can, tell us, who can tell us about the KM challenges over there that we can begin to address today. Fortunately, we can have emissaries to the future like Yusek Rose. So to tell us more about the future, I now give the floor to Undersecretary Rosemary G. Adilion. Okay. Thank you very much, Director uh, Nerisa, and uh, thank you to the ADB for organizing this. And uh, good afternoon to everyone, uh, Sec. Carl Chua, and to uh, the ADB Vice President Bambang Susantono. So I, I just want to uh, say at the outset that uh, knowledge co-creation is actually a mandate of NEDA. Next, please. This mandate actually em emanates uh, directly from the Constitution. So Article 12... Uh, Section 9 actually says that Congress may establish an independent economic and planning agency headed by the president, which shall, after consultations, so that part consultations, with the appropriate public agencies, various private sectors, and other uh, um, government uh, units, recommend to Congress and implement continuing integrated and coordinated programs and policies for national development. So all those words that I have uh, uh, put in bold are actually um, words that we use with respect to co-creation, to knowledge co-creation. Next, please. These are the uh, core programs of, of the NEDA. So we have socioeconomic policy and planning program. Uh, we have the uh, national investment programming, monitoring and evaluation. And then, of course, the uh, HRD and the uh, organizational development, which is uh, strictly internal to NEDA. For each of these uh, programs, um, we conduct uh, researches. We conduct data compilation analysis. We conduct consultations, uh, model buildings. And also that we can provide technical inputs to the NEDA, uh, NEDA committees, the cabinet committees uh, of the NEDA board. Next, please. And so far, we have, uh, right now, we have seven uh, interagency committees. So all of these uh, uh, different agencies uh, in them, and uh, the, the NEDA actually provides technical inputs and also policy advice. Now, another uh, big effort that we have done on knowledge co-creation is when we determined, next please, what is it that Filipinos want to be, what is it that Filipinos want to do and want to have by 2040. We did, we did this exercise back in 2015. In fact, the ADB has, uh, has supported actually this exercise by uh, putting in place uh, a group of uh, uh, eminent persons to, to do the uh, technical studies. Next please. And just to refresh our memory, just for the information of, uh, of everyone here, this is uh, actually the summation of, uh, of all those uh, things that we, uh, we found out. It was from a survey, from focus group discussions, and from meetings with, uh, with uh, eminent persons that Filipinos want to have, want to enjoy strong family and community ties. Uh, they want a comfortable lifestyle, and they want to be able to look forward to a secure future. In other words, a matatag maginhawa at panatag na buhay. I hope uh, VP Bangbang could uh, understand the matatag maginhawa at panatag na buhay. But right now, we are in a different situation. Next, please. It's now really about future. It's now about having uh, a recovery. Um, next slide, please. 
So it's about uh, having an economic recovery and making sure that we are able to uh, future-proof that recovery. We have always said, next please, that it's uh, really about um, being able to transition to uh, the new normal. So what we did was actually to find out, next, previous one. We also did uh, co-creation, of course, using the online platform. The previous piece, uh, using the online platform on uh, what uh, Filipinos perceive to be the new normal. May I have the previous slide, please? Well, anyway, <laughs> so so we uh, we we asked the uh, uh, we asked the Filipino. We actually crowdsourced the. Um, uh, the, the description of what is a new normal, and then uh, how do we transition to a new normal? And so this is actually, again, the summary of uh, what that new normal is. The general context is one where there's physical distancing that will still be observed, face covering will still be required, strict hygiene and sanitation protocols. There will be more outdoor and than the indoor activities. There could still be sporadic granular lockdowns, and more importantly, COVID-19 threat will be foremost in the minds of, uh, of individuals, Filipinos, businesses, consumers, and uh, ordinary uh, citizens actually will, will always have that COVID-19 threat in their minds. So it's about future proofing. Next, please. Actually, on the basis of this new normal and on the basis of what we have done also uh, Last year, yeah, when we came up with the We Recover as One report, uh, we also uh, updated the Philippine Development Plan. And uh, for many of the uh, uh, strategies that we have uh, included in the Philippine Development Plan, we have also reached out to our development partners, including the ADB, to uh, help us in the tweaking of the strategies. But going forward, it's about making our strategies more resilient. So. What we are looking at now is actually uh, Republic Act 11293, which gives the NEDA uh, a fresh mandate. And it's really about um, uh, having the oversight of the Philippine Innovation Agenda. So this is actually the Philippine Innovation Act. So it adopts innovation as a vital component, component of the country's development strategy uh, to drive uh, inclusive development. So next, please. So doing the brainstorming, we figured that it's really about having a very dynamic innovation ecosystem where we, where, where we have the uh, private sector, we have the academe, those coming from the sciences, those coming from the engineering and design, those coming from the arts, and those coming from the social sciences. And of course, you have in the middle the entrepreneur. And uh, what is needed now is really for government to drive this uh, ecosystem so that uh, you, you, you facilitate the innovation. Next, please. We have identified actually the drivers or the enablers. We call it the enablers of this uh, innovation. There's the governance part, the policy, the, uh, the learning culture has to be there, of course, the infrastructure, and then the technology, and of course, the innovation financing. Actually, for most of these enabling mechanisms, they are already included in our, in the, um, implementing rules and regulation of the uh, I, of the uh, Republic Act 11293. We look forward to um, um, engaging again with uh, with our development partners, including the ADB, of course, in uh, in coming up in fine tuning all these enabling mechanisms. Offhand, we have uh, identified seven priority groups for which we think that we should really have more of this innovation uh, ecosystem. Uh, we need to, if, do, to facilitate the innovation ecosystem so that we can have a very resilient recovery. Next, please. So this is another um, initiative uh, that is also being uh, assisted by the, uh, by the ADB. And this is really in preparation for the next Philippine Development Plan. It's about learning from best practice. So as you know, we were supposed to be an upper middle income country um, 
uh, towards the end of last year, were it not for COVID. Uh, but right now, we think that uh, it will be pushed back uh, probably by 2023. Uh, but even then, we need to be able to um, really prepare for that. So we are doing a study together with the ADB on looking at what is the optimal governance structure to support the transition to an upper middle income economy and then onwards to an upper income economy. So we are looking at what was the state of play in there are neighboring countries that have uh, actually transitioned already to an upper middle income country and then of course to an upper income economy. And we're looking at five different aspects of this development on savings and investment and of course looking at capital markets, on the digital infrastructure, on education and skills, on uh, research and development, and then on technological innovation. We want to find out what is the kind of government that they now have and what was it before and how they did, did they transition. We hope to be able to, to come up with the, um, you know, uh, the prepar preparation going towards that transition. And we look forward to uh, the, the assistance that's actually uh, being given by, uh, by the ADB uh, uh, on this one. So next, please. So just to wrap up, this is actually our uh, local version of the iceberg model. And uh, we do believe that uh, um, knowledge uh, is really um, a matter of, um, yeah, there is, uh, it's, it's like an iceberg. Or in this case, it's like the Ta'al volcano, where you only see the top, actually. And uh, we, you only get to see what just happened. But there's a lot more that's going, in under, going on underneath it. And it's really, uh, it's really important that you engage in knowledge co-creation so that you are able to get to the bottom of it. And then you are able to come up with the effective strategies to address if it's a problem that has just happened. So... Uh, as uh, like Neris has uh, mentioned earlier, we do have a lot of uh, knowledge co-creation in, in, at NEDA, knowledge generation and knowledge co-creation. And that is the reason why we do need a lot of uh, uh, a very, very good knowledge management system. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Director Inarisa and Yusek Rosemary for that very informative and eye-opening presentation. I agree with Director Inarisa that it may be too soon to be already talking about success, but ADB will be the team in the journey. Yusek uh, Rose talks about NEDA as co-creating knowledge and creating or, or driving an innovation ecosystem to explore better development planning, better services to the Philippines, especially in the post-pandemic recovery. We will be working with you hand in hand. Now then, ADB's knowledge partnership will not end, of course, with the strategy being approved and implemented. At this point, may I just call on first uh, Vivek Raman, uh, the principal knowledge sharing, and spe uh, knowledge sharing specialist in our team. Vivek, over to you. He will be discussing about how we will be able to sustain the and the momentum of the knowledge partnership between NEDA and ADB. Thank you very much. Uh, firstly, this is so exciting to be here. I mean, congratulations to everyone who's been involved in this. And to be honest, it's been a remarkable journey for us. And Nerissa, I take your point to very much to heart. It's not about celebrating the success, but yes, in this journey to pause and reflect on a milestone that we have achieved. Uh, what I really appreciate about the NEDA uh, KM's journey is that even when the pandemic was happening, you know, it only took us around 20 to 30 days to pivot. And none of you draw, even despite an agenda of, you know, a huge global pandemic, KM, you did not drop KM. And subsequently, in the coming months, we saw so much evidence that when you adopt KM, you actually have better results. You know, those countries that had better KM practices actually showed that they were able to handle the pandemic better. And so, so, much, so great appreciation for that. And just, I also wanted to reflect on Secretary Chua's words that, uh, you know, future proofing, innovation, becoming future ready. And that's our next chapter with you as well. You know, so I'm so happy to be able to uh, embark on this with you. And thank you so much to VPKM, who's actually been a strong supporter. And he pushed us to engage in this, you know, and he reflected that in his opening remarks as well. And also Secretary Chua for his, uh, uh, just his support throughout the time uh, and not saying, hey, let's pause KM during 
different priority. We continued everything and now we have the results here to share with you. I have a couple of slides and some ideas that we wanted to put forth with NEDA on what we will be doing next. And I will quickly share this with you. So step number one, we have five ways to sustain our momentum with NEDA. We do not want to pause. Uh, VP already spoke a little bit about this, that the implementation roadmap for our KM strategy is ongoing. We have a very clear action plan on what we want to do. NEDA has actually run far ahead of the support ADB can give. So we are playing a very humble role here and a very small role in just making sure that we are the right catalyst. Uh, Nerissa, working with Director Nerissa and DIS has been a remarkable pleasure and seeing that KM team grow with their capabilities being enhanced has just been one of the, the biggest delights for us in this work. Uh, capacity building for NEDA staff on KM is an ongoing effort. We are helping organize a lot more trainings for our staff in uh, being able to communicate uh, the KM results, the KM journey. Then it's very important to pause and reflect on the monitoring and evaluation framework. So we will be working with NEDA to develop that so that you can start seeing what is the result you want to get from the house of KM that is called the NEDA house of KM. Second, IT is an important part. And but as we've been seeing in the past two days, it's not the only part of KM, an important part of KM. We want to make sure that you have those capabilities as well. And we are organizing some trainings around that. The last thing is developing a community of practice. We realize that NEDA offices are across the Philippines and we need to make sure they're all connected as one NEDA. Uh, so therefore, we are happy to support a journey of communities of practice in NEDA and to work with them on that. The, this is kind of responding to Secretary Chua's point about being future ready. So what does NEDA and innovation capabilities look like? Uh, Secretary, uh, Under Secretary Rose also mentioned this about future proofing, foresight work. Uh, so we are happy to organize something around that and we will be continuing that. We are actually establishing an innovation hub and our launch is uh, in an hour and a half for that. So we are happy to engage with organizations such as NEDA to work with us on that. And I see so much work uh, that Under Secretary Rose presented on uh, just uh, the Innovation Act and the things that NEDA has planned. We want to be very much a partner and actually learn from you. We're also not just be that, oh, we need to, so you need to teach us a little bit about this Innovation Act because we in ADB are now going to think about an innovation framework. And of course, a regional KM network that can connect with the community of practice that NEDA has a plan for. And finally, a technical assistance program continues with NEDA and we hope to only be able to make that stronger. Uh, Under yeah. Secretary Nerissa, there are a few questions on the side and I was hoping if we could take a few of them and if anybody else wants to volunteer as well, we could do that. Uh, so one of the questions is about um, how do we facilitate an innovation? E no, m and &E lessons learned. How do we measure impact? Uh, and, and Director Nerissa, could you talk a little bit about NEDA's plans on measurement of uh, impact of KM work? You've prioritized KM so well. What are your thoughts around that? It doesn't have to be a perfect answer just yet. We know it's a work in progress. Any ideas? Oh, yeah. Um, I think one, uh, one indicator is when we form teams, uh, multidisciplinary, uh, multi-sectoral approach in um, in addressing uh, uh, a problem or an issue, for example, and when we, um, a, a as Under Secretary Rose mentioned earlier, if we're going to do futures thinking, if we're going to do some some innovation, we really need to work together and collaborate. Um, so we're not just uh, we will. One indicator is that um, all the the officials in, in different groups are able to uh, form a group, uh, a team that we that will be um, collaborating on. Uh, on a, on a project or a program that, so that's one and then the other of course is the easy retrieval of information so we don't don't have to scramble for inputs every time we, we, the secretary has a uh, this is one little thing you know um when the secretary is uh, is about to speak or is about to, to answer a, a uh, in a budget hearing um then all the information are there and easily retrievable so i guess those are uh, a couple of things great uh, and Director Nerissa, there's another question which relates very much to what you're, I'm not putting it on screen because it's too long, but uh, they're talking about breaking silos in NEDA. 
you know how do you you know what are your thoughts there uh, you can talk about that technical working group that you have established and and they're talking a little bit about km is not just vertical horizontal but it also is vertical so how do you do both what are your idea what are neda's thoughts there of course on that on that silo one of the first uh, things we do when we uh, started the km strategy was uh, you know, um, the, the technical working group is actually not uh, cons consisting of technical officers. They're actually high-level assistant secretaries. All four of our assistant secretaries com comprise the NEDA um, KMTWG. So we're able to uh, to discuss um, all the KM, not just the KM matters, but all the substantive things that every um, every each of the groups are actually uh, dealing with. So. We have the policy and planning group. We have the investment programming group, and um, well, the corporate affairs group, and the regional development group. So all the assistant secretaries um, are there in the KMPWG, and they're the ones providing the direction um, for our KM strategy. Uh, that's an excellent uh, uh, reflection, also, Nerissa, on how you are, you know, really socializing the whole concept of KM. You know, uh, and for all of those who are listening. Uh, you know, there's a very interesting question. Why are we using the term future ready? You know, what does that mean? Uh, and I gave some responses to uh, the, the colleague who asked that, but what is Neda's thoughts? Why are you using future ready, future proofing now? What does it mean to Neda? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's user close is still here, but um, to my mind, future, having a future uh, ready organization means being able to. Um, uh, foresee uh, to have foresight really and there are as we we keep mentioning when we are uh, talking about ambition at 2040 or the long-term vision there are so many things that we cannot anticipate there are so many things that we cannot um, uh, uh, foresee and plan for we are a planning agency but then there are so many things that we cannot plan for so we can only hope that um, uh, we are able to uh, we are prepared enough um, to be agile that our Kind, the, the kind of planning that we um, that we uh, uh, do is one that is um, agile and flexible, and you know, it, it not, it's not a linear thing. So maybe Yusek Rose can can add to that. Yeah, if Yusek Rose is still here, I'm not sure. Yeah, Yusek Rose, anything to add? What does future ready mean? Yes, hi. It's really it's really about being very uh, very agile, very being very flexible, having the end in mind. And uh, it's really about being able to, to, to grasp at opportunities, whatever they may be. And it's really to be able to get to your, uh, to, to your desired outcome. So like when we did the, uh, the We Recover as One report, and you know, this, is, uh, this was at the height of the pandemic. And of course, at that time, we, we needed to find out how the people are doing in this pandemic, the first ever in our lifetime and the first ever lockdown also in our lifetime and how can the government effectively address those fears those concerns etc but the problem is how do we find out <laughs> how do we cannot conduct uh, we cannot conduct uh, uh, obviously a data collection a survey etc and then we we you know people are are in their homes there's still this uh this online and so we came up with that uh, the online survey where we had almost 400,000 uh respondents so being able to uh well we didn't have a subscription to this or that software we used uh you know all our other connections to be able to uh, to to be able to um uh execute that uh, very uh, big uh, survey and uh it was actually able to help us a lot and uh we were and that was uh that actually contributed to um the design of the assistance programs that that came afterwards but essentially it's really about being able to like like nerissa said there's there's so many uncertainties right there uh going into the future and it's about being ready to grasp at uh, the opportunities and being able to um really uh muster whatever strengths that you have so that you you get to your you know your desired uh, future thank, thank you under secretary rose very well put the desired future and i think that's what we wanted that's what is so relevant in today's context as well uh director nerissa i wanted to ask you do you want to talk a little bit about that knowledge management survey we did amongst all of neda offices 
and you know the kind of response we got and how we you know the neda house of km was designed with inputs from neda staff oh yeah because there's some yeah. questions here about that yeah yeah actually um the question the kind of questions we uh, we asked um during that assessment was that um, how easy is it is it uh, to to gather information to get all the information that we need um to the work and uh um what uh how do you propose to um to go about uh, a knowledge management um a strategy um whether um uh, well what are what are the kinds of issues in terms of how the organization is structured and how the the, the systems are are designed within NEDA. so and those are the things that um uh that got into or the insights the that uh, the the team learned from the um, engagement with the staff um, from officials to to the um the, to the uh, low levels uh, the rank and file staff um those went into the uh, design of the team the house of um, yeah. thank you thank you i think we'll take one last and, question uh, just, just to add um Vivek, uh yeah i'm very glad that uh, you also mentioned that amid the pandemic we're supposed to have that uh that uh, yes. the, the grand assessment the evaluation and then the pandemic happened and are we gonna stop now but no <laughs> uh we were able to push to push through with it and, no, uh, no, no, but really, really i i it's not to kind of uh, you know praise one another but that was that commitment shown with neda kind of energized us to be able to do it Right. I mean, even we were equally lost when the pandemic happened, and how do we do this? But we came up with a plan together. Uh, Joe, yeah. I think you had a question. Yeah, yeah. Just related to that, um, to Director Narisa, because um, she's our focal person in NEDA, and um, we've been working closely with her. So, just a question on the overall partnership. If um, you had to start it all over again, what would you do differently, and maybe we can do better? There's a little bit of echo there, but let me try and repeat that question. Uh, Director Nerissa, the question is, if we had to do this partnership with you all over again, what could we have done better? I think, uh, well, as I said in my, my talk earlier, it, you know, it was kind of serendipitous. So I was, okay. I was there at the right place at the right time. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think it, it's more of uh, engaging the um, uh, engaging more of the other staff so i was i just happened to be there in the meeting but if um adb uh actually had some um more engagements with the other units of um leda um yeah uh, so that would be um uh the, the perspective would be um uh wider yeah good point and with so, that yeah, with the other units of NEDA, director nerissa you say Rose, there's one more question i which i was going to ask how do you get you know there's there's some point here about making knowledge management attractive across all staff in neda how do we ensure that how is what is neda's plan on trying to make it cool and how do you make sure that there's interdepartmental collaboration i'll give it to a director nerissa first and then i'll hand it to under secretary rose we have six minutes left Sorry, um, maybe music rose can go ahead okay you say rose why don't you go first <laughs> Okay, thank you. Actually, whenever we do uh, the, the Philippine Development Plan is uh, is always a socialized uh, learning process, uh, not just within NEDA, but actually across government and even including the, uh, the, the stakeholders. Now, I think um, having a, a, a very, very efficient way of communicating, having a very efficient way of uh, gathering up information, uh, that would actually make our work so much easier. And, uh, you know, we can um, actually all of these things that we are doing um, really has to be done in a very, very short amount of time. Uh, most of our policy analysis are actually had to be done in a matter of days, uh, some of them overnight. <laughs> so it really makes uh, for, for a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, ease and convenience for us if um, there's very good uh, knowledge management where we can already get, you know, we can already understand why is this uh, statistic coming out this way? Why is the labor force participation increasing when in fact the, the cases were high? So all those sorts of things, if there has been um, 
uh, very, very good uh, knowledge management early on, which, you know, kind of uh, banks or kind of comes up with a, with an information bank on, on, on things that are all the, all, that's the problem, all the kinds of things that are going on, uh, some way of curating this so that they can be uh, easily um, uh, applied or utilized, then that will be not just cool, but it will certainly be welcome. Thank you. Yeah, on my end, um, what I would really like to happen is uh, more stakeholder engagement with MEDA. Um, I think uh, for now, it's really limited, not just because of the pandemic, but also because of the, the, the staff. Um, we have limited um, human resources, and uh, all our officials are quite stretched too, too thinly already. But we really would like uh, to engage more um, citizens, more of our stakeholders. So that's uh, what we're um, we're hoping we can do through our uh, and it's it's um, it happens that uh, the the knowledge management division is under um, DIS, uh, the Development Information Staff, which is in charge of communication. So we we really can put together the communication and knowledge management. And um, that would be, I think, in my view, would be a, a good way to go. All right. Um, With that, I think I'm going to thank uh, Under Secretary yeah. Rose, uh, Secretary Chua, Director Larissa, VPKM, for uh, what has been a humbling journey, a learning journey. But uh, I completely take to heart what you said. This is not completed. This is something that we have to continue to do to ensure it is a success. There is a lot more to be done. But it was important for us to recognize this little milestone. And if Kelly was here, and I'm going to speak on his behalf, Kelly will also probably have emphasized very much the importance of this partnership to the Philippines country office and how important his support has been, uh, not only with the other departments in uh, the government of Philippines, but also with NEDA and how you know he's, we have got a technical assistance that is being planned. And I believe he had spoken to uh, many of you a week or two weeks ago about an ongoing map plan of how to continue to do the technical assistance. And we just, it's unfortunate he couldn't join, but I'm sure he'll follow it up with a phone call with you to explain. But yeah. uh, thank you very much, Director Nerissa and Undersecretary Rose for even engaging on a little Q&A. It wasn't really planned. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And I would like to echo, of course, uh, Vivek's appreciation to all our speakers for your contributions to this session and to all the people watching, of course, particularly those who contributed in the Q&A and, of course, those who provided comments. And, of course, to our producers, just um, Vivian Pabilico and Taymor Nabili, uh, Mary Beth San Victorias and Ashwat Desarathi, thank you. Thank you for your assistance. We heard from the Secretary himself how management of information and knowledge plays a significant role in guiding decision makers to make an informed decision, um, make everything strategic and agile, especially in this time of COVID-19 pandemic. And yes, our VP, Mr. Van Santana, has expressed any discontentment to not to knowledge work. Hopefully, we all now have some appreciation on how investing in strong knowledge management capabilities lead to better economic planning, resilience, and how it facilitates sustainable development, not just in the Philippines, but across the region. Again, thank you, everyone. Air and stay safe, everyone. Thank you.